Hello and welcome. In this video, OJM partner Carol Foos, CPA, discusses President Biden's proposal for tax law changes, which have a stronger possibility of passing now that the Democrats control both houses of Congress. OJM Group partners are the authors of 12 books written specifically for doctors, including our newest book, Wealth Planning for the Modern Physician, Residency to Retirement. To get your free print copy or ebook download, text OJM Web to 844 418 1212 or click the button below. Hi, I'm Carol Foos. I am a CPA and a partner with OJM Group. Thanks for joining today. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how President Biden's tax proposals could impact you and your practice. So as you know, now that um, the final Georgia elections have been set and the Democrats control both houses of Congress, there's certainly a greater likelihood that President Biden's tax proposals may pass this year. Um, I will say, you know, we're going by what has been proposed, what was talked about in the campaign, some things that have been brought up since the campaign. We have no way of knowing yet what sorts of negotiations will go on, where these proposals will end up in terms of what the actual change in a tax law would look like should it pass. But, you know, I think it could be helpful for you to know what some of President Biden's proposals are going in just for um, assistance in talking with your advisors as you're getting ready to have 2020 tax returns prepared. And maybe um, this will spur you to do some planning for 2021 and beyond. So first off, the proposals would include a return of the top individual tax rate to 39.6% up from the current 37%. This would affect those with taxable income above $400,000. Now, there hasn't been a lot of detail about, does that mean $400,000 for a single taxpayer? Does it mean $400,000 for married filing joint taxpayers? Would there still be a difference at the top rate for those two classes of taxpayers? We don't know. But also keep in mind, uh, the top individual tax rate is slated to go back up to 39.6% under current law as of January 1st, 2026, because the individual portions of the tax law that was passed at the end of 2017 uh, were temporary changes. Biden's proposal also would increase the tax rate for C corporations from the current flat tax rate of 21% up to a tax rate of 28%. So still well under that 35% rate that many medical practices uh, were taxed at as personal service corporations in the past, but it would be a jump. Next, and I think this could have a big impact if it passes, let's talk about social security tax increases for high earners. President Biden's proposal would assess social security tax on wages above 400,000. Now under current law for 2021, employees pay 6.2% and employers pay another 6.2% on the first $142,800 of wages. That's per employee for an employer. This proposal would have that same tax. So 6.2% for employees, 6.2% for employers assessed again once wages exceed $400,000. So there would be a wage gap from 142,800 up to 399,999 where there wouldn't be any social security taxes on the wages, but once you get to 400,000 you would start paying social security taxes again. Now this is in addition to Medicare taxes are already paid on wages in an unlimited amount. So those Medicare taxes are 2.9%, they can go up to 3.8%. Um, 
that's both the employer and the employee portion, but that's on all wages. So this would be somewhat like that. One thing that I think you're going to want to think about if your practice is taxed as an S corporation, often what we see are S corporations that are somewhat acting like a C corporation where all of the owner's compensation is paid in the form of W-2 wages versus having a combination of W-2 wages and profit distributions to the owners. So those W-2 wages are subject to Social Security taxes and Medicare taxes, profit distributions are not. So you might want to be thinking about that um, as part of your planning process in terms of whether you might need to change some compensation formulas within the practice. Now for C-corporation practices, what we often see are um, C-corporations that try to eliminate their net taxable income at the corporate level by paying out bonuses to the owners, again, in the form of W-2 wages. So keep in mind, you're going to be looking at potentially Social Security taxes on those bonuses, as well as higher Social Security taxes for you, the employer, on your highly compensated employees, for instance, those non-owner physicians that are employees. Capital gains and qualified dividends. Um, this would be a major change should this portion of President Biden's tax proposal pass. Um, his proposal would include taxing capital gains and qualified dividends at ordinary income tax rates for those taxpayers earning over a million dollars. Now keep in mind currently the tax rate on long-term capital gains and dividends is 20% for taxpayers in the highest tax bracket. You add on to that a 3.8% net investment income tax under the Affordable Care Act. So we're at 23.8%. This would bring taxes, capital gains taxes for those making more than a million dollars up to that 39.6% rate presumably still with that 3.8% surtax. So that's a huge change. What happens with that is it makes it more important than ever to manage your capital gains, to harvest losses against gains, to be aware of the tax drag on investments. So again, trying to limit your in your taxable accounts, those qualified dividends and unnecessary capital gains Make sure you've got an investment advisor who is watching that and managing to that. And I think what we may see is for liquidity events, such as practices being sold, um, installment sales may be key because as you're selling on an installment sale basis and receiving that income over the course of more than one year, the tax will be paid um, and the capital gains will be taxable as you're receiving that income. So that may be a way to spread it out and keep the income below that million dollar threshold. For itemized deductions, President Biden has proposed capping the value of itemized deductions at 28% for those in the top tax bracket. So as an example, you're at a 39%, 39.6% tax rate you've got, let's say, mortgage interest that's being deducted. You know, for that dollar of mortgage interest deduction, instead of getting a 39.6 cent on the dollar benefit, you would only get a 28 cent on the dollar benefit for that mortgage interest that you're paying. He has also proposed restoring the P's limitations for those above $400,000 in taxable income. Now, the P's limitations essentially limit itemized deductions for high income taxpayers. Um, you know, there's a reduction of about 3% of itemized deductions once you're over a certain threshold. So, presumably, his proposal would include restoring those limitations. On the good news front, for those of you in states that have high state and local income taxes or high property taxes, it has been reported that he, along with Speaker Pelosi and Senator Schumer, are in favor of getting rid of those state and local tax deduction limitations, the SALT limitations, where currently 
you're limited to a maximum of a $10,000 deduction for all state and local income taxes and real estate taxes. Um, certainly it makes sense that Pelosi and Schumer are in favor of, of that as they come from very high income tax states themselves. Qualified business income deduction under section 199A, there is a proposal that President Biden would put forth where that would be phased out for taxpayers earning over $400,000. Now, again, that's where for pass-through income that's not income from a specified service trade or business, you can take a deduction of 20% of that qualified business income on your tax return. Um, that is slated to go away right now after 2025. It's one of those temporary parts of the tax law that passed in 2017. Many of you who are physicians in the top tax bracket generally aren't able to take advantage of this deduction for your medical practice income already because a medical practice is considered to be a specified service trade or business. So you may not be getting the deduction right now for your medical practice income. However, some of you may be receiving that benefit for surgery center income um, and many of you might be receiving it for other pass-through business income for businesses that you've invested in, including um, real estate businesses. Child and dependent care credit. Um, for those of you maybe who've got younger children and you're paying child care expenses, the current law limits expenses that can be used towards the child and dependent care credit to $3,000 per child in a given year or $6,000 for multiple children. And the amount of the credit, once your adjusted gross income is above $43,000, is it's only a 20% credit on those amounts. So Biden's proposal would include increasing the eligible expenses to $8,000 for one child and $16,000 for multiple children. And the credit amount of up to 50% would be available for those earning up to $125,000. So um, that might be helpful for some people and it certainly makes a lot of sense. Certain, and even for those of you who own practices for many of your employees, this may be a benefit that they'll see in their tax returns. Finally, I wanted to mention the estate and gift tax exemptions. Under President Biden's proposal, that estate tax exemption would be reduced back to 2009 levels, which would be three and a half million dollar exemption. And the gift tax exemption would be reduced to a million dollars. Now, again, I wanna state, we certainly don't know what will pass. Um, I'm sure some of these items will pass Many of them will change prior to final passage of any bill. I also want to point out in the past, sometimes when a tax law passes, it could be retroactive to January 1st of the year that it passes. It could be um, partially in place for 2021, where some aspects of it would be effective in 2021, other aspects not effective until 2022, or it could be something that passes and nothing is effective until January 1st, 2022. At OJM Group, we're committed to keeping you informed as we see changes in this or hear about changes in this. And you can certainly look for updates on our website at www.ojmgroup.com. As we hear of things, we're gonna post those. But I do want you to be aware of this as you're meeting with advisors and talking to them for both tax planning and estate planning moving forward. OJM is a multidisciplinary wealth management firm, and we have worked with over 1,500 physicians, businesses, and individual investors throughout the country. We would welcome the opportunity to speak with you about how we might be able to bring value to your wealth planning. OJM partners have authored several books all of which are available to webinar viewers at no charge. You can get a free print copy or ebook download by texting OJM Web to 844-418-1212.
You can also visit OJMBookstore.com and enter OJM Web at checkout. In addition to a free book, OJM Group also offers viewers a complimentary consultation where we can answer your questions and see if our firm might be a good fit for your situation. Visit OJMGroup.com or call 877-656-4362 to schedule your free consultation. Enjoy the free copies of our books and we hope to have the opportunity to speak with you. Thanks for watching.